Any questions from the floor? look at the uh, farmer economics and which scenarios uh, would work well in diversification. Do you have an estimation on what it would cost to change the situation? How much time that would take? you that was I was not involved in really uh, doing this study uh, so I really cannot answer this question but I think um, um, yeah, there, if you if you uh, work on several factors the price of course is one factor you know, we heard that several uh, times also in the morning so price is the best fertilizer um, and uh, diversify the income um, uh, the income uh, situation of the of the farms, and that is also something we are working uh, from Gisco with a project we are starting now in in Cote d'Ivoire. I think this is these are some important factors where you can change the situation. But of course, uh, this should be done, um, yeah, all together with within uh, the, those different actors which are supporting the um, the cocoa sector in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, just want to add, um, there is indeed um, a need for more research. I've seen um, a paper, I think it was from Solidaridad, where they calculated in West Africa that farmers could make much more money uh, on Helvea trees and, and, and palm oil than in cocoa. But um, for palm oil you need the, the factory nearby and for Helvea you need a, a system how to collect it. Plus you need a transfer of knowledge to the farmers. And I have never seen a uh, calculation what this will cost. Um, <coughs> farmers should get a training in good agricultural practices which opens up the possibility to diversify, so not concentrated on cocoa alone, um, so that they can choose. My, my, my colleague who did a paper, uh, field research in Nicaragua in, uh, in spring this year, he found out that their farmers diversified from coffee into cocoa just to get two options uh, because world market prices where normally they don't move the same direction. So in years when the coffee price was low, they, they often didn't, didn't harvest the, in the agroforest system, they didn't harvest the cocoa at all. They had a choice, they invested their labor into something else where they earned money with. Um, much more has to be done and uh, much has to do with uh, improvement of extension services plus improvement of markets. You can tell farmers divide, diversify into something else and there is no market for it. There's a question over here. Hello. Um, my, my question was about um, data and so that you've shown some data and there is definitely a need for more accurate data in, in different areas and I was interested in whether there was a proposition for the industry to share the data that it's collecting so that you don't have to keep on repeating yourself because the feedback I'm getting from farmers I work with is they've really had enough of being asked the question and now what's what's the answer and so that sense that we're not sharing data is actually stopping us being able to make a difference. This is a very good question um, and I'm stressing this point since years in every meeting I have with the cocoa industry uh, and also, um, yeah, uh, explained already, I'm a board member of the German Initiative of Sustainable Cocoa and we are working there to exchange these things. I know that many things are around. I know, for example, a researcher who did it uh, with a whole team, they tried to find out in Ghana how can farmers diversify, which suits into their calendar of labor. You know, you shouldn't have a second crop, which uh, you have to put into most labor at the same time with cocoa. They looked into markets. This paper was finished, it was never published, and since 1993 it's gone. I, I, I could make a list of these papers I've heard about in different countries. So exchanging data, data for a long time was a major problem. 
Um, I hope that Cocoa Action is now going to change some of these things because uh, they're the biggest companies uh, working together. A few years ago when we as NGOs went to companies and said you have to do that, they said it's not possible due to competition laws. Now they show that it is possible and um, I hope that we will exchange data. data. Uh, same with a project we are setting up with, uh, with GISCO in Germany. A big part of it is doing research and the decision to share um, all these data with all the members, which are uh, more than 60 organizations and uh, all the big companies in Germany. So um, we need a platform and we need to make the data available to improve the situation at the farmers and stop collecting data and then hiding them. Any other questions? And then we'll get to your question. Uh, hi, it's Anna Dillon from Tesco Commodities. I was wondering how much of uh, the grafting and the progress in grafting is actually part of these strategies to help improve yields and therefore income for the farmers in various countries. Um, I don't know. Um, I've seen um, some slides and some presentations that this is a very fast way to improve uh, the trees. But I've also seen articles from Indonesia with the headline Frankenstein trees because they grafted a lot of trees and they had very good harvest for one, two, three years and then it seems like the whole system broke down. But I don't know. Some people say that is uh, the silver bullet uh, to uh, rejuvenate uh, old farms uh, very fast, but uh, it's not widespread. There are people here in the room who know more about it, I'm sure. I know that in Latin America it's quite common and uh, it was, uh, it's a very uh, important uh, technique for um, the, the improvement uh, data we saw in, in Latin America, but um, as uh, Friedel said, there are some people here who know more about it. Maybe Melba, could you say something on that? Maybe <laughs> expert from Nicaragua on cocoa and draft crafting. <laughs> Buenas tardes, yo les hablaré en español. En el lado de Centroamérica, el, el, el injerto es una, una, un método que se está ampliando el uso principalmente para garantizar el tema de la intercompatibilidad dentro del diseño de plantación que te permite realmente tener plantaciones productivas. Porque ahí así tenemos eh, distintas variedades trinitarias que no son intercompatibles, o sea que no se puede cruzar una planta con otra y esto sí genera bastantes problemas, entonces ahí el injerto funciona sin embargo también hay grupos indígenas que eh, creen que esto es una técnica antinatural y pro, lógicamente lo ven como un Frankenstein, pero sí es un método rápido de mejorar productividad si se hace bien Over here. Uh, my name is Michaela Kuhlkom, I'm in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, I was surprised to uh, see that in these models uh, the price is uh, an exogenous uh, factor. Uh, if, for example, um, really the farmer would increase, or would nearly in, in some of the scenarios, double their area. Um, then there would be a much higher production and uh, probably uh, prices would, would drop uh, given the importance of Côte d'Ivoire for the global market. Not, uh, that would not be uh, felt by the producer in the current season but uh, probably in the next season when, when the, uh, um, uh, the fixed price would be lower. Um, so should that not be uh, implemented in the, in the model that this is uh, uh, not only an ex not an external factor, but uh, uh, endogenous factor. I understood that you are afraid if yields 
go up too fast, prices will go down. And or what was the question? Sorry. I think price, the price would be much lower, so uh, yeah, it's, it's not really... really rising growth. Mm. Uh, and if you study economy, you learn something about the miserizing growth. That means you get poorer and poorer, the better you produce. And that's true for some commodities especially. We have seen that the growth rate of consumption is a little bit more than 2%. But if all the projects want to double or even triple yield are successful, who claim now to work with 10,000, 100,000, 300,000 farmers, I think we would have, a, again, a price level like in the year 2000, which was one of the roots, which is one of the roots of the problems. So um, um, increasing yields has to be coupled with diversification. Um, in an ideal world, a farmer who has two hectares of cocoa you would, in, in West Africa, you would produce a ton of cocoa in the future on one hectare and use the other hectare to do something else. Um, but this is the ideal world. You need a market for, for something else and you need the extension services plus you need the seedlings so that on half of the, uh, of, uh, of, of the area you can <coughs> produce the double amount of cocoa he does before. So this is the holistic approach you need. If, if everybody goes for productivity, we will just repeat um, the, the circle we have with, uh, I mean, in, in economies you talk about, in Germany it's Schweinezyklus, uh, uh, Schweine Schweinezyklus, yeah, I think it's international. Uh, so price go up, after a few years you have an overproduction and when it goes down, <coughs> this term is much longer uh, with cocoa trees than with German swine because uh, they need a couple of years to come into production, but uh, to avoid that you need to talk about diversification. <coughs> I think, you know, we say the obvious and that with a tree, be it coffee or cocoa, um, the, the cyclical patterns are longer. Um, the lag factor creates issues because by the time you have the rev up in production, the market price is already passed and most producers won't benefit from it. And that's the um, sad and unfortunate reality of the market. Um, with that, I thank you for participating and for stepping in as you did. And we're going to move um, quickly on to our next session, which is the um, business opportunities in cocoa processing and then following. The